last thing you want to do is start a wash and not have enough to finish it. Here's one thing that, that, that happens is most people, when you're doing something like this, they'll fill it up and then they'll touch it to the side like that and empty it. You don't want to empty that brush. You want The reason why we use these brushes, the mop brushes, is because they hold a lot of water. So we don't want to empty them. You can hold it up like this and it'll drip whatever it needs to drip and then go ahead, come, come up here and begin doing your wash. And the way that I like to do my wash is to make sure that I have a nice bead that I can work from. And also to make sure that when I'm, when I'm using my brush, I'm, I'm barely touching the paper. I'm, I'm really trying to pull the bead down, right? I'm, I'm pulling the bead downwards um, as I go along and I'm not, I'm barely touching the paper. And I'm also pointing my brush in the direction that I'm going. So I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. I'm actually pointing the brush in the direction that I'm going and allowing the bead to just move below, move, move lower as I, as I do this. And this is very, like I said, I'm not like the thumb, I'm using the thumb to hold the brush in place. I'm not using the thumb to push the brush into the paper. That's how I avoid having those plowing streaks that that a lot of people have when they're doing washes like this they have those plowing streaks because they're pushing the brush into the paper at the bottom it doesn't matter so i'm just gonna let it be like this okay now um we're just gonna let this dry a bit um it's a very light wash you can tell right we're gonna let this dry a bit and just come in and clean up all around um be careful with the bead at the bottom of the page because that will want to come up into the painting again. So we'll just come down here and lift it with the Kleenex like this and make sure that it's it's not accumulating. And if it does accumulate, just come back and pull some more. Okay. So first wash, I'm going to be using my um, hair dryer today just to make sure that we we're moving at a good clip, and here's the um, here's the trick with hair with hair dryers. When we work with watercolors, we're working with a, with pigments. Pigments are little tiny particles that float in the water. They don't actually dissolve in the water; they float in it. And when they do that, um, and they're coming, you know, you place them on paper. They're sort of settling in. They they settle into the paper uh, on top of it most of the time. They sort of settle uh, on there. Um, if you use your, your hair dryer while they're settling, in other words, while the, the top of the paper is wet, you're, you push them into the paper. And again, again, that tends to make the picture dull. But if you wait a bit and you wait until they've sort of settled into the top of the paper, but there's a thickness to the paper, so the top is dry, but the wetness remains underneath in the paper, that's okay then to use your hair dryer. You just want to make sure that you know you touch, you touch your hand to the paper like this. This is not dry yet. I can see a bit of water on my on my fingers. So we'll wait a couple of minutes more, and and make sure that it's completely dry before we come back in and do um, the use the hair dryer and then and then go ahead and uh, and do another wash. I'm back and I'm I'm going to do a second wash now. So uh, again, the same thing. I'm, I'm just taking this and going ahead and beginning at the top here and making sure that I have a nice bead and building up from there and coming downwards. And you can see now that the color is much richer. It will be, it will actually turn uh, even nicer when we add the, the next color on because all of that, you know, the fibers uh, will be coated and will have true color as opposed to color that's sort of being interrupted by texture. So, and is that the same color that you used before? Absolutely the same color, same wow. consistency. So I'm not, I'm not adding, um, uh, I'm not increasing the intensity of the color. I'm just, um, I'm just um, doing another wash with the same exact color that I used before. 
you know, if you don't want to adjust your monitor, just know in your head that this is yellow, yellow ochre. Again, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes until everything is settled and, and dry. It dries from the top faster than the bottom, of course, because the water is coming down. We're waiting for this bottom part right here to dry. So everything else is a top dry, but not the bottom here. So what I want to do with this one is I want to start at the top really heavy, lighten up in the middle, and go back to being heavy at the bottom, right? Um, so I want to tr transition different ways. So I'm going to begin here pretty heavy like this. Um, take my bead and begin to begin to do this. Now I'm it's really nice and rich and I like it like, like this, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up some water now in my brush. So I'm actually trying to reduce so I, I haven't agitated my brush. I'm not trying to remove the all the color from it. I'm just trying to reduce. So by doing this, what happens is it gives me transition because the bead still has a lot of color in it, right? But my brush is, is adding water to the bead. And so you get this transition. You get this lightening of the color. You can see, you know, from the top to where we are right now, it looks a bit lighter, right? And it's going to continue to look lighter as I go down into here. And then right about here, I want to go back and pick up more color and begin to add to it. So again, it's going to be lighter at the top because the bead has more water in it now. And it's going to be darker as I go down because I'm adding more color to the bead, right? So transition in and out like this and at the bottom i'm just going to pick up some more color from the palette straight up and add it down here like this and get that full feeling of color at the bottom so you can see there's a nice transition back and forth between these If you're enjoying this class, please hop on over to our website because you can keep watching part of it for free. Next up, Zan will teach us how to paint clouds and how to add a misty feeling to our painting. Hope to see you soon and until next time, make more art.